Hello dear second year students, welcome to English Classroom. This is Ashri Khan, Assistant Professor of English. So in this video, we'll take up an important aspect of vocabulary, that is idioms. Have you heard of idioms in your life? What are idiomatic expressions? Okay, let's explore what are idioms now. Okay, idioms in English are very, very important aspect. You should have some kind of mastery over English, right? So let us see the definition of idioms. So when you Google this word, you get this definition. This is the definition from Google, right? So idiom is pronounced as EDM. There is a diphthong idiom. A group of words established by usage as having a meaning not deducible from those of the individual words. So idiom is a group of words and you cannot arrive at the meaning of the expression by just looking at the separate or individual words. You cannot come to arrive at the meaning just by looking at the words, individual words, okay? Individually, the words may be something else. And the total meaning of the expression is, is something completely different. For example, we have idioms given in the Google, over the moon, over the moon. There are three words, okay? It has, the meaning of this is nothing to do with moon or over, etc. And you have, see the light. What is to see the light? You look at the electric bulb. What is it? Right. What is an idiom? So, the origin of this particular idiom may be somewhere in the history. Okay. But the people forget the story or anecdote behind it and these idioms or expressions come to exist in the language and we have to we use these idioms in our day-to-day -day life right for example what is the meaning of this over the moon means extremely delighted suppose you passed all your semester exams with a plus grade you will be over the moon moon you will be extremely you will be extremely delighted and another another idiom see the light understand something after prolonged thought or doubt okay it will see the light something is dormant be below the carpet okay one certain day you will realize what it is you will understand what it is something which is which was dormant for so so many days and years finally one day it comes to light it will be known to the public that is coming to see the light of the day okay so that is the definition or it's some little bit of introduction idiom is a group of words okay uh, whose origin may be whose origin dates back to some historical event or a story and which cannot be understood by looking at the individual words it has a, a special meaning right so why idioms are important? What is the significance? What is the importance? Why at all we should learn idioms? Without idioms also we can, you know, use the language. So they're an important part of English vocabulary and add color to our speech. If you use more idioms, that adds to color. That will be more meaning. It sounds good. And that, that will be more audible, right? Origin of idioms, dates, dates back to a historical story or a practice okay every idiom has its own story somewhere in the history but you cannot trace the anecdote behind it for all the idioms some of the idioms we know the story but you don't know but you have to know the meaning you have to know them as many you know the better it is for you for your vocabulary okay individual words can't give the meaning of the expressions in idioms as i already told in the definition individual word just by looking at the words you can't arrive at the meaning 
Just you have to know it. That's it. From a reliable or authentic source. Learning all idioms will en enrich our vocabulary. Okay. If you speak a language with idioms, then your vocabulary will en will be enriched. The more and more idioms you learn, the better it is for your vocabulary. Vocabulary is very, very important. It's the most powerful thing. Anybody who is good vocabulary, okay, is considered to be, okay, definitely has social advantage in communication. He has a better communication skills, correct? Good speakers use idiomatic language in their speech. Any good prose stories, we have very good writers, you know, G.K. Chesterton is there, or Ken Orion from India was there. All these are good, okay, users of language. While they speak, while they write, okay, some prose piece like story or essay, they use idiomatic language. What happens to the language when we use idiomatic, okay, expressions in the speech or written, uh, okay, communication, what happens? It enhances the quality and beauty of the language and earn appreciation from the listeners. The more, okay, idiomatic expressions in your, uh, you use in your language, okay, the speak, the listeners will be more enthused to listen to you, okay, it adds, okay, it will have an engrossing experience, immersive experience, okay, you can, okay, make the listeners and get enthused towards you, you can attract, you know, uh, listeners or your audiences, okay, you can really draw their attention with good language, okay, that's, that's why the idioms are very, very important, if you just go on speaking plain sentences without any good expressions, then it will be very boring, if you use good idioms and if your language is enriched with idioms, definitely they will give you a lot of value, good quality, so whenever you are using a language, the quality is tested by any group of people, correct? So collect as many idioms as possible and practice them in your life. So the more idioms you collect, you explore. There is Google there, there are books available from any good source. You go on collecting and noting down in your note learning notebook and make use of them, okay, off and on whenever you get a chance whether in a written communication or written communication, these idioms are extremely important, right? I'll introduce some of the idioms. To bite the bullet, bullet, you know, bullet is not a vehicle, it's a small pellet, metal pellet, which shoots ahead, okay, from a pistol or rifle to your source. So you, can you bite the bullet? Can you get anything out of it? So bite the bullet, what is the mean? To accept something unpleasant. Okay. So we have, we had other thoughts during the month of March. Suddenly Corona crisis, okay, was, okay, become very rampant. So government announced lockdown and we had to bite the bullet. No other alternative. We had to accept the situation, right? So there is extra A here. Right? Without complaining, you have to accept the unpleasant situation. That is biting the bullet. You have to take that unpleasant situation. You have to accept. To kick the bucket. Kicking the bucket. You kick the foot could you kick football, but what is kicking the bucket? It is to die. He kicked the bucket. The old man kicked the bucket. Right? It's not um, committing suicide, it's kicking the bucket simply means to die. You have a cake and eat it too. A little bit of uh, you can understand uh, from the phrases. You have a cake and eat it too. You want the cake and you want to eat it as well. So that, what does it mean? You want to have both the advantages. You want both the advantages, which are a little bit go in two different ways, but you want both the advantages. You want, okay, you don't want exams and you want the government to pause you like that. To upset the apple cart, to spoil our plans or arrangements. You have so many plans. You have planned um, a short tour, an outing to, tomorrow, but rain, a big rain, a heavy rain has come. So what happens? All your plans will be thwarted, right? 
so your uh, plants will be spoiled by the rain so upset the apple cart suppose you want to pause the examination and join in higher higher studies but you failed in one examination unfortunately that okay failure will result in what is the what is the situation uh, how in what way it can be described okay your apple cart was upset once in a blue moon generally you see silver moon or some other moon but blue moon is very rare in some countries a blue moon appears so a rare occurrence to do very rarely anything you do very rarely for example you come to college once in a month people may call your lecturer may call you a coming you come to college once in a blue moon right tip of an iceberg okay iceberg mean a, a big um, mountain ice mountain okay big mountain in the ocean but uh, on the surface you see only a simple tip there is a big mountain of ice behind the waters right under the waters so only small part of something is visible or known compared to unseen for example the threat posed by the coronavirus may be a tip of an iceberg may, there may be some other other kinds of problems okay waiting for us it may be just a teaser there may be some other problems viruses waiting for us unless man transforms himself there is no you know redemption spill the beans okay there was a practice in america while uh, costing their votes there who okay whoever cost his vote he has to put a bean a vegetable bone in bean into a, a bucket or container and after uh, three or four contestants will be there okay whichever buckets uh, gets filled first okay the next uh, whoever comes and puts that bean in that particular bean so it comes it overflows okay and it is uh, revealed the secret is revealed to the uh, remaining voters who had to cause their votes yet so revealing a secret okay square meal in india there are millions of people for whom it was very difficult to get a square meal one full or complete meal okay there are so many unfortunate indians poor people for whom it was very difficult to get a square meal a full meal square meal is the idiom if you use this sentence use this in a sentence that sounds good but if simply you say there are so many in millions of indians for whom it was very difficult to get a full meal no it doesn't sound good you have to it's very difficult to get a square meal it sounds good that is the okay power of idioms that is the power of the language you will become a powerful person in your you know group you can have a command social command over your friends and your peers when you have very good command over language especially idioms correct to bite the dust to fall to the ground you fall on the ground or to die there is another meaning to suffer the defeat suppose one team goes to finals and the team gets defeated in the finals and we might express express okay in the finals the team okay has bitten the dust of course in the idioms you can make you change the verb according to the situation from present to the past or past participle okay they bit the dust they, they have bitten the dust or to bite the dust simply infinite okay to face the failure right next we have find the meanings before we actually go into the exercises from the textbook i have collected certain very simple and uh, these are very very important also i took pains and efforts to collect introduce you to a few more idioms but i want i don't want to tell the meaning you might know the meanings meaning of some of the idioms uh, okay which are on the screen right but i want all of you to go to your dictionary idioms dictionary or google and find the meaning this is an exercise for you because you have to be a researcher being a student apart from a student you have to be an explorer you have to explore things okay things won't come so easily you have to take put your efforts to know the meanings first one odds and ends 
what is the meaning of this idiom bread and butter what is the meaning okay greek and latin okay whatever he speaks is greek and latin to me people say this is this profession is my bread and butter and first one odds and ends okay uh, these are the odds and ends of this um, particular concept the main points of this concept were not given i'll just explain to you but you have to okay collect correct okay get the correct meaning from your own source right achilles heel okay so some people say english is the achilles heel to him in all other subjects he is okay very clever intelligent one's cup of tea gardening is not my cup of tea right playing uh, football is my cup of tea like that a dog in the manger okay my friend is like a dog in the manger he doesn't allow me to go to library or study and he doesn't, he doesn't study like like that dog in the manger what is this i have given you explained the situation but you have to get the meaning leave no stone unturned in order to get the treatment for coronavirus they explored all the possibilities they left no stone unturned to get cured of the disease right rule the roost in the game the captain ruled the roost all other players just simply okay stood like spectators the captain ruled the roost in the game the bury the hatcher okay the two warring countries decided to bury the hatchet they want to make peace with one another they want to make peace with between them stay put okay i don't want to take any decisions i just want to stay put an axe to grin while teaching um, good english by taking extra effects i don't have any axe to grin so what is the meaning beat about the bush so i can say like this so without based on without beating about the bush let's get into the topic right between the devil and the deep sea yes what is the meaning devil and the deep sea okay in the lockdown condition most of the people were caught up between devil and the deep sea they don't have any employment and they cannot go out go to the dogs if the youth of the country okay are lazy and they are if they are not proactive if they are not hard working the country will go to dogs right there is a certain uh, important idioms that i want to introduce to you but i want you to find out the meanings from a dictionary or google that's the simplest but you have to write them and you have to do that exercise Oh, there is another aspect of idioms so what is the you know structure of an idiom i told you that idiom is made up of two or three words what are those words actually what are what part of speech is the uh, is of the particular word in that particular phrase or expression in the idiom so some of the idioms may be a verb and an object for example verb speak your mind okay whatever there is there in your mind you speak that is the object preposition and noun phrase first preposition in noun phrase in leaps and bounds okay anything that happens quickly leaps and bounds okay leaps and, leaps and bounds is the example the first part is the structure and the second part is the idiom okay this is the idiom this is the example and this is the idiom in leaps and bounds is something which happens very fast leaps and bounds suppose uh, a team scores 100 runs in five in 10 hours that is they made the runs by leaps and bounds okay so another compounds noun plus noun it may be 
for example odds and ends one example odds noun ends okay that means simple details not very important details of something bread and butter another noun plus noun okay noun noun next one strings of adjectives two or three adjectives together just like flowers in a garland right for example cool calm and collected okay is a during a speech he appeared to be cool calm and collected during the performance okay she appeared to be cool calm and collected cool is adjective calm is adjective collected is also adjective collected is not verb here fast and furious right fast and furious is also fast is speed furious is angry fast and furious is a combination of adjectives correct a simile simile is something a uh, figure of speech which makes use of as or like for example there is a simile as bold as brass here this particular um, idiom makes use of as so that's why it is a simile like a fish out of water somebody in a difficult situation so for example um, you you face you are inconvenient with the strangers you are like a fish out of water right so like is there here your as is there this is very important that's why it is a simile like is there this that's why this similar uh, this uh, idiom is uh, a simile in fact okay similes and metaphors we come uh, come to that topic later on in our future classes and videos sentences it can be a proverb sentence a proverb like a sentence okay what is a proverb which teaches us some good moral conduct in telugu english so many proverbs so an idiom can be a proverb a full sentence or a proverb no use crying over split milk suppose a student failed in the examinations because he was not attending the classes regularly and after getting coming the results coming of results he feels very sad sad and you say that there's no use crying over split milk next one is or the grass is greener on the other side of the fence this is another uh, sentence which is like a proverb what is it the grass is greener when you look at the other side that appears to be suppose you are studying in government college okay when you think about a private college that appears to be good but when you actually go there are so many you know defects or demerits in that system so when you watch something from a distance that appears to be good that appears to be much more greener but if you actually go there there will be so much so many patches and gray areas correct so these are uh, with regard to structure verb and object prepositions and noun phrase compounds noun plus noun strings of adjectives within the idioms it can be a simile or a proverb but don't worry about this concept nobody will ask you what is the structure how many types of idioms are there just for your knowledge right in examination standpoint we don't have to bother well uh before um, concluding this topic i have two exercises right so choose the right word this is the exercise number 1 choose the right word to complete the idiomatic expressions so there are words given in the brackets music 1 2 cake 3 shoulder 4 pie ends ocean use rags the last one ninth one is cloud and we have six sentences okay these six sentences in fact, these are idioms, should uh, take six words given in the close in these brackets, only six words, three will be left out. So you have to be careful, little careful, little bit of observation and you should have a little bit of exposure to idioms. Anyway, no worries, I will tell you because you don't know these uh, sentences first, but you can 
little bit of thinking arrive at the right meanings or right uh, okay answers as well first one all these pro promises these uh, politicians make are just dash in the sky that is music fake shoulder pie p i e pie ends ocean used as cloud when you think of sky you generally connect it to cloud but it's not so here okay it is pie just i am writing the number pie all promises this politician make are just pie in the sky pie means something which is extremely pleasant in android system there is a present version what is that android pie version android 10 something before that android oreo was there kitkat was there now it is pie pie is something really a bakery a bakery item pie is a, there is also a bird but a general meaning of pie is something which is extremely pleasant so all promises the politicians make you are just pie in the sky in the sky they are very pleasant but in actual practice it is very very difficult to realize okay they show heaven in the palm but after the elections they will disappear they make tall promises and they don't get realized they talk about employment etc etc schemes etc okay houses etc but they don't get realized okay the pie in the sky they sound very pleasant but they don't get realized it's very hard to get them the small amount of money donated it's just a drop in the dash compared here d should be there compared to the large sum of money needed only little bit of money okay is donated but you require large amount of money so which word fits in here okay the sum of money drop in the ocean right drop in the ocean just a drop in ocean has billions of mill billions of billions of drops but the money donated you require a lot of money for example you require one crore of money but you have only 10 rupee with you so in that case drop in the ocean so ocean is the answer number six got my point third one i had to face the dash all by myself though i was not responsible for the problem a person is not responsible for a problem but he has to face what he has to face music one music means he has to face all the unpleasant situation whatever abuses rebukes that will be given by his boss he has to face them he has to take all the wrath and anger from his boss but he is not responsible his colleagues are responsible so that is the decision to face the music is the uh, idiom here drop in the ocean is a drop in the ocean is idiom here in the first example just a pie in the sky from here to here is the idiom and this is used in this sentence right next sentence they had a dispute yesterday they had a pro arguments conflict yesterday or a quarrel yesterday that's why she gave him a cold she was not talking to her cold shoulder cold shoulder shoulder will never be cold ice is cold but this is idiom right so what do you write three to give a cold shoulder is the actual idiom and this is the sentence he has been successful in his life he went from dash to dash, dash to dash, dash to riches any person who okay hails from a very humble very ordinary poor family and go you because by doing all hard work okay he becomes a rich person then we say he has risen from rags to riches rags to riches rags means the simple cloth pieces people collect rag pickers will be there beggars okay from the garbage they pick the rags and bottles etc and they eke out their livelihood so rags are small pieces of cloth right this is eight okay we got this point rags to riches from rags to riches is the actual idiom the last one he spends his time drinking and watching tv 
most of the time waste his time. Generally, a person who watches his TV hours on or hours together is called a like coach for Tatra. But he is no dash to man or beast. He is no more useful to either his fellow beings or to beasts or animals. He is of no take. Okay, ends. Ocean, rags, cloud use. Use is there is no use. Seven. So music we made use of. Shoulder we made use of. Five. We made use of. Ocean we made use of. Use we made use of. And rags we made use of. Okay, cloud you didn't make use of. Okay, cake we did not make use of. And what else? Ends we didn't use. Okay. So this is one exercise and the last exercise is there for you. This is the match the following. These are the idioms and these are which you, can, which you see in uh, red are idioms. These are meaning you have matched them. So A, B, C, D, F. Six idioms are there. On the opposite side you have seven meanings. So one has to be left out. Okay. That makes our task a little bit difficult. But anyway, I'll explain to you. To run like a clockwork. Okay, this is uh, this should be base. Just a storm in a teacup. Just I'm reading out the idioms first. Run like a clockwork, a storm in the teacup. Do not see the wood. Do not see the wood for the trees. Wood means forest. Do not see the wood for the trees. To have a soft spot for somebody. To be twiddling our thumbs. Fiddling our thumbs or like this state of the art. You got any meaning out of this? Okay, expression. These expressions are idioms. State of the art. State means you generally remember Telangana status, etc. Soft spot, you remember something. Fiddling thumbs, thumbs, you re remember something. Tea cup means you remember a cup and tea inside. Run like a clockwork, you remember a clock on your wall. So what are, what is the meaning? Just try to let us find try to find out these. Uh, first one to run like a clock. I'll read out all the meanings as well. Just you can connect. In while I was reading, just you can connect. Okay, to cause someone to be upset or annoyed. Okay, you will upset the a person or you will irritate a person. To go smoothly with something which runs very smoothly without any hitch, without any glitch. Okay. Uh, seamlessly trans to feel bored with nothing to do another meaning a lot of fuss over nothing you are making a lot of you and cry but there is nothing in it next one preventing you from seeing the overall situation you can't see the overall pitch picture of something okay you cannot distinguish okay you have a confused picture most advanced or modern another meaning to be fond of somebody you like somebody very much, small children like that. So can you connect the seven meanings to these six idioms? One has to be left out. Just observe. Okay, shall we go? Right. To run like a clockwork. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which one is which one fits? Which one matches with this idiom? Which of the meanings fits in better with this? To run like a clockwork means two. Works smoothly in a clock. The needles, okay. Uh, what we call hands, minutes hand and seconds hand, hours hand. They run smoothly, smoothly without any hitch. So I'll I'll write the answer here. Q beside A. O is A. A goes with two. Right. This is over. Next one. A storm in a two cup. Okay, what is the meaning? A lot of fuss over nothing. You make a lot of shouting and yelling and others and there is nothing in it. You just lost your pen and you are shouting at others. Finally, after five minutes you got somebody handed over you the, your pen. But you are making a lot of fuss that you lost thousand rupees, right? A lot of fuss over nothing. So number four matches with B or matches with B. C, 
to not see the wood for the trees. You can't recognize between what is a wood, what is forest, what are trees. Just can't make it. Suppose you're reading a, solving a puzzle you don't understand. So something which is preventing you from seeing that overall situation. Okay. Suppose uh, some of the Hollywood movies. Even if you watch the film for half an hour, they don't give you any clue. What is the content? What is the subject topic of that particular Hollywood movie? Right? So, not to see the wood for the tree. You are totally confused about the subject. So, five matches with C. Right? Next, D. To have a soft spot for somebody. You have a very soft collar. Special favor towards somebody. Means somebody is already here. You can just, okay, have a clue here. To be fond, you like fond means you find you like somebody, okay, because of their intelligence or something, some other quality. So seven man goes with the seven goes with the right, and this is taken away. This is taken. This is already taken by us, right? Next we have two idioms and three meanings. To be twiddling our thumbs. Twiddling our thumbs. Generally, we twiddle our thumbs when you don't have any work, you feel bored. Okay. Suppose you go to a meeting and meeting is yet to start. There's still one more hour for the meeting to get started. Then you simply sit on a chair and twiddle your thumbs. You feel bored without nothing to do, with nothing to do, right? So this is three. Three goes with E. Okay, right. Loss of state of the art. You have state of the art facilities in this hospital. The university has state of the art library, state of the laboratories. Means very advanced and modern equipment, modern amenities in that particular building. Okay, so six goes with state of the art means modern, most advanced equipment. Okay, so these are idioms and meanings, and one is left out. Okay, it is not the meaning of any of the idioms in this exercise. So, hope you guys liked this video. So, please, uh, all of you, do like, share, and subscribe this channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon for my future videos. So, let us meet again in the my next video until then